what can we be doing out here? Ah, let's see. Where is that stuff? Uh, yes. What can I do with it? There, no, it's not there. Through a series of unfortunate events, I now own a PlayStation 3. I never set out to become a PlayStation 3 owner, or the owner of any video game console for that matter. They just sort of come my way. I've had several consoles given to me over the past few years, and uh, this just happens to be the most recent one. I'm going to show you how to deal with an age-old problem that affects modern plastics far and wide. It seems that manufacturers have decided that consumers prefer their electronics to be shiny for some odd reason. And that shininess comes at a cost. It only stays shiny for the first few days of ownership, and then it turns to hell. I'm going to refer you to my television right now. This is a, a one-owner TV. I'm the only one who's ever owned it. And the entire base, even though it's really not that visible, the entire base of this TV is completely scratched to hell, even though I only clean it off with Windex, spray it onto it first, and then wipe it off with a microfiber cloth. That's how I clean it. But that was never enough. Not for, not for that plastic. The thing is, they decided at some point that everybody likes shiny things. And because of cost savings, they make the plastic out of the, the weakest, softest plastic they can find. I think it's just ABS plastic. And the result is, it tends to scratch very easily. As a matter of fact, if you look at it wrong, it scratches. Now, this is motorcycle plastic cleaner polish. This is designed for motorcycle windshields, which are made of acrylic. And a little dab will do you. You take this stuff. Now, I've already done this once on this, and it looks a hundred times better. I don't have any before shots of this, um, but I'm going to do it again just to show you how it's done. Um, the scratching will never completely go away. What this will do is it will actually help um, almost blend the scratches into the surface. This is a semi-abrasive um, um, chemical and what it really is doing is it's actually grinding away at the surface layer of the plastic little by little and it doesn't do enough to cause any harm well, unless you're really bad at this. Um, but what it will do is expose nice, fresh plastic underneath. And it gives it a nice, polished sheen. You can do this on MacBook laptops, as a matter of fact. And I think um, in my next demonstration, we're going to do that. I've got a MacBook, uh, MacBook, an iBook, sorry, that we're going to try this on. Now, the one thing you cannot do is use this compound on painted surfaces, um, decals, logos, anything printed silkscreen under the surface, any painted plastics. Do not do this. Um, this is really just for glossy plastics only. If it's textured, don't do it. But you can certainly do this on a, um, on a plastic surface that is intended to be glossy. Now, I am doing this over the PlayStation, um, PlayStation logo. Not a good idea, but... <laughs> because I believe it is, in fact, silk-screened. But we see how we're going in circular motions. And we're going to do this until the material is completely used up. And we've ground away as much of the surface layer as possible. Okay, I'm not going to make a video, by the way, I'm not going to make a video of the PlayStation 3 because there's already millions of that, millions of those videos out there, and the PS3 isn't exactly a collectible yet, so 
we're not going to talk about it much. For those of you who are used to my video style, I'm going to skip that for a minute. We're just going to go over this polishing methods that I found. And we've now polished the surface of the PS3. It is now nice and shiny. It looks brand new again. Um, there are still hairline scratches, but it is what it is. Now you can take a toothbrush and you can clean the polishing compound out of the grooves like this, just like so. And that's how you do that. So that way you don't have any polishing compound in the grooves. All right, I think we're done. So she's good for another couple of days. And then it'll scratch up just because it's shiny. That's just how things work. So next up, we're going to take a look at a real classic. I've got a, um, a Macintosh or Apple Macintosh iBook. Uh, the first generation of the white iBooks. That's the second gen iBook. And uh, those are made out of a, uh, an acrylic similar to the material used on... Um, motorcycle windshields and uh, they were also notorious for scratching very easily. Let's take a look. And But before we do, let's get some more uh, angle shots of this thing. See how the, the shine is really prevalent. Now if you stick it in the sun, it's not going to look great. But, and again, they never looked that great to begin with. So. As a matter of fact, I think they left the factory looking like this. But hey, it's better than it was. And for a free PlayStation 3, I'm not going to complain. I mean, these things still sell for about a hundred bucks used, so eh, it is what it is. Okay, now this is something that you're more used to seeing on my channel. I've got an original iBook G3. This is the second gen iBook before they or after they went to the uh, white plastic, which is an acrylic um, material, and this one is in mint condition. You'll never find one in this condition. Whoa! <laughs> this thing hasn't been charged in uh, six months. Holy shit. It's actually, it actually started. Let's see if it boots up. I, I didn't expect that. But this iBook, this is one of the first... Um, versions of the white plastic iBooks and uh, it has very 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 few hours of use on it um, in fact I would hazard to say that it was never really used but like everything else made out of acrylic and polished to a shine it is scratched beyond belief let's take a look well, I'm gonna wait for it to boot up first then we gotta shut it down okay How's the battery look? Uh, almost empty. <laughs> All right, let's shut her down. Oops, maybe the battery just died. There it goes. Yeah, it did. Now it's in sleep mode. All right, we'll deal with that later. So we're going to take our motorcycle polish. Now let's get a good look at this uh, surface here. Maybe I can, I was going to use a flashlight, which really helps to highlight some of the scratching. It's kind of hard to see on camera, though, but let's see what I can do here. All right, if I get the camera at an angle, maybe. No. Well, let's just say it's scratched. I, I really can't show you any better. I have all the lighting I have here, so. You'll just have to take my word for it, I guess. All right, we're going to use our Meguiar's Motorcycle Plastic Polish. I'm going to put it in a few spots. You don't really need a lot of this stuff. It goes a long way. So We're just going to rub it into the plastic. See, right here at this angle where I'm standing, you can really see. You can really see the uh, scratching that's fairly heavily involved. And we're just going to go in short little circles, just like that. Do, 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 do. I get a lot of people requesting, um, I'd say three or four is a lot, so about three or four people um, have asked me about polishing these older Macs, 
and uh, this would work on a newer one as well. Uh, the newer, um, the MacBooks that are made out of white plastic, the unibodies and the non-unibodies. This would work on those two because those are molded in color; they're not painted. As long as the surface isn't painted, you're good to go. For example, the wrist pad on this machine is painted. It's painted silver. So don't do that. <laughs> don't use it on that. You're going to ruin it. I promise you. Alright, I'm going to put the camera down so I can... I'm putting a lot of stress on the hinges by doing this. But I don't really like doing that. Especially in something that's so minty fresh, you know? It's not every day you actually get to see one of these in this condition. But like I said, with the PlayStation, you're not going to remove the scratches. You're really just filling them in. This rubbing compound actually fills in some of those little scratches and uh, it helps to wear down some of the lighter ones so they're less apparent, but they're still there. You're never going to remove them. Um, unless you do some serious uh, <laughs> grinding. But the machine is much shinier than it was before. Still scratched, but much shinier. It's not going to make it any worse, let's put it that way. You can actually see the shine in it now, where you couldn't before. You can see the fan moving in the background, right there. You couldn't see that before. No, you can't. And that is what this will do for you. It will wear down the surface and bring the shine back to it again. But do not use unpainted surfaces. Now let's take a look at the other side. I'm going to flip it over. And we're going to see what the back side looks like. You can clearly see there, there is some shine to it, but not much. Obviously this is not the original battery. Actually, no, this is the original battery. Come to think of it, that is original. I guess you can still see some shine to it. But let's give it a try. Let's see what this stuff will do for us. But yeah, I've been getting a few requests over the years um, <clears throat> from people that have been kind of dealing with this issue with older Apple products. And uh, I haven't been able to find a good solution until now. This is the best I can do. Um, alternatively, I mean, you can certainly take these plastic pans off and put them to a buffing wheel. I mean, you can do that. It's a free country. Um, but it's a lot of work, and, you know, it, and sometimes, and, and i got to be honest with you, I, I used to work on these when they were relatively new, <clears throat> and as they aged, they got harder and harder to surface, because, to service, because they were just made out of such fragile materials that got brittle with time. I do not recommend working on one of these if you can avoid it. <laughs> So if it works and you're happy, leave it alone. Don't take it apart. But if you really want to try your luck, you have been warned. I used to do logic board replacements on these when they still had, you know, actual value. <laughs> and they were a pain in the ass. So this is helping a little bit. It is bringing a, a much more vivid shine to the material. It's not making it brand new by any means, but... Any improvement is an improvement, right? And you don't want to wax over this. I made that mistake once already. Because if you wax over this, the wax could potentially build up in the scratches that are there. And once that happens, it's just going to develop a much... Um, what, what it will do is act as a highlighter for the scratches. 
So it's a little better. I mean, it, it does look much better than it did. Um, but you can still see there are some deep scratches here. And there's just no way to get rid of those. I mean, they're, they're there forever. Unless, again, you, you, you really buff the shit out of it. Uh, with a buffing wheel, you're just not going to get them out. So, that's that for now. So, go through and detail it with a, one of these. One thing I like to do is clean these uh, rubber feet. And we're going to use um, straight alcohol for that. It does a very nice job of uh, cleaning them, making them look light again. But yeah, if you want your Mac to shine again, yeah, it's really the only way you're going to do it. And yeah, I am pretty certain that the battery is original. And here's how I can tell, since you asked. Alright, come on. Get the, I can't get the seal off the freaking alcohol. There we go. We're there. Alcohol in here. We're going to clean these feet up, make them look white. Let's make them, uh, make them shine. There we go. So I can tell that the battery is original because of how it's made. It's just that the materials don't always discolor at the same rate. So the original battery to this model would have been made out of a translucent plastic, just like the bottom pan, that was painted behind the, on the back. So it's painted on the reverse side, that way it, it appears like it's white, but it's also translucent. And same with the bottom pan. But of course, these materials don't always discolor at the same rate. And that's why it looks like it does. But for a MacBook that is now 15 years old, I think it looks pretty good. Um, I'm really certain this is uh, copyright 2001, so yeah. This is going to be roughly uh, 15 years old this year. So It's now a bona fide antique. <laughs> Getting collectible, that's what it is. It's, it's becoming a collector's item. It's not worth a lot of money right now, um, but as people start getting nostalgic for early 2000s electronics, uh, then we might see some, some, uh, some value there. But, thank you for watching. You now know how to polish a Mac. I mean, again, it's, it's as good as you're going to get it. But thanks for watching.